All right. Hello. I hope you. En Hello. I hope you all enjoyed your coffee and or refreshments and or break, and I hope you're all ready for. I hope you're all ready for another inspiring talk. Next up is Marcus. Marcus is living here in Austria. He's working at the IBM Client Innovation Center. I went there once. It's at it's at the DC Tower in in the northern part of Vienna, and like. It's the tallest tower in Austria. Not sure about Europe. I think it's like up there. It's really cool because like they use like a giant tub of water on the roof to keep it stable. Isn't that awesome? Like I don't know how architecture works, but I was really impressed by that. Anyway, so Marcus is here going to talk to us about how to make your apartments a little bit smarter using IoT. And uh, that's enough of me. I'm going to give it away to Marcus. Okay. So. Thanks for joining everyone. Um, so um, the topic is smart apartments with the IBM Watson IT platform. Um, he already introduced me, but uh, just a few, few more notes. Um, yeah, I'm working at the IBM CSC. If you don't know it, we have a table outside. And if you're smelling the popcorn, you're at the right place. Uh, my colleagues will give you a short introduction what we will do, uh, because I don't have time for this now. Um, this is Cacio, and I'm working there as a JavaScript developer. Um, if you want to have a look at my smaller projects, go to GitHub, or if you want to see some memes, or I don't know, any dev retweets, uh, that's my Twitter handle. And yeah, so in the next 20 minutes, I will try to um, tell you um, what Internet of Things means, um, why we are spending so much time and effort um, to um, spread this technology and to work on projects uh, within the IBM with um, big corporates and how you can also start um, with um, making your apartment smarter. Um, and that doesn't mean that you just go on Amazon.com, buy an X, and you think, okay, that's it. Uh, there's more behind it. So um, the first question is, and I want uh, you to raise your hands, who knows what Internet of Things mean? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, um, who has a smart device at home? Or thinks he has a smart? Okay, a few one. Okay, and who is a real nerd and has any sensors um, installed and is really doing something with the data? Okay, one. Okay, maybe after this talk we will have a few more hands. So, um, Internet of Things. Um, what does it mean and why are we doing this? Um, so basically, it means um, that we have a lot of devices around house, in, uh, around our house, in our, in, in our, in our apartments, or even in um, industries. Um, every device um, collecting data, uh, but it's not accessible. And IoT just means um, connecting these things. So uh, suddenly, we, we can um, maybe have um, bulbs um, at our home and. We can connect them and also connect to them and um, evaluate how much energy um, we are consuming and maybe enhance um, that we can automatically shut it down and when we are not at home, stuff like that. Um, also, all the equipment, um, all the smart device, so you can maybe um, use it as an alarm when you wake up in the morning, stuff like that. So that means basically Internet of Things. And why are we doing this. So, for example, for the industry, Accenture estimated um, that it could add 14.2 trillion to the global economy. Um, it's a lot of money, so that's why a lot of big companies like the is investing uh, time in it. And um, it helps us to develop better business models um, because we have a better um, insight how the user uses his devices and acts in his environment. And um, with this information, we can also um, generate a stronger client relationship and therefore can sell it better. Um, so why didn't we do this uh, 10 years or 20, sec uh, 20 years ago? Uh, the one thing is that um, the hardware is really cheap. So for example, you can buy a Raspberry Pi for 30 euros and you have everything with it. Um, also, um, sensors are really cheap, so you can buy it for 2 euros to 20 euros, depending on which sensor. And um, also, uh, we have a really good, good um, infrastructure and a lot of um, cloud services, like the IBM Cloud. Um, yeah. And like I said, um, it's about generating value. 
So who knows, maybe the Twitter handle Internet of Shit. <laughs> okay, a few one. So for example, buying a, a scale and um, you come at home, want to check it and you have to uh, do an update. That's not what we understand under IoT. Or another example, a spoon with a Wi-Fi chip. I mean, seriously, who needs that? So also a bad example. Um, two more, for example, don't want to get any SMS from a shaver. That he reminds me that I shaved two weeks ago. Also bad example. There's a lot of a lot more examples online, so you definitely should check it out. Uh, last one, a smart um, mug. So um, it automatically shows you which temperature it has, and you can warm it up. But um, it also doesn't bring really really uh, much value when I mean, you have to wait, I don't know, five minutes to really use it. And yeah, so um, it's about um, to, to, to think about, okay, what does the user need? And um, yeah, just to have a good business solution. So for example, um, if we control our plugs, we can automatically say, okay, um, the power consumption is that high and you can um, save energy and cost with it. Or maybe if you have um, your windows connected or your curtains, um, that you can also say, okay, I'm pulling um, weather data from any service, and when I have a big storm outside, I can automatically shut down my, um, um, my curtains, for example, to protect my house. So very simple um, things that we can achieve um, with all the data that we can access. Um, so the really interesting thing, in my opinion, is um, how to get to this data and why should I choose the IBM Cloud, for example. So um, in this case, um, we have often um, industries with a lot of machines and uh, or our house with a lot of electronic parts. And uh, the big question is now, um, how do I get to the data? And um, that's why the IBM cl uh, Cloud comes into the game. So um, basically, you have a device. Um, I will explain it in a few more slides later, um, which devices they are available. But that's generally the whole life cycle. So you get a message from the device. For example, the plug is on or not, or the sensor is um, collecting data or not. Um, you send it to the IBM platform. Um, and then you can send it to any database. And at this point, um, I think most of us um, can figure out um, how to access the, uh, this data and how to um, yeah, write an application um, for that. So um, yeah, it's really easy and um, I will have a demo um, also later. So um, the architecture of our smart apartment would be that um, basically we have a gateway and a device to collect data. So a device could be um, a, sun, uh, a sensor, like a passive infrared um, sensor, or like a smart plug. So it's a sensor or an actor. And um, most of the time these sensors are very stupid. So they are just um, having electricity and are measuring it and therefore, um, and later you have to do something with this data. And often those devices don't have any um, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth uh, built in. So that's why we often need a gateway. So for this example, um, we have, I'm using a gateway here. That's, that's more a gateway of an uh, industry um, project. So it costs about 300 euros, but it's also um, waterproof and um, yeah, it can also resist minus 40 degrees. So that might be um, interesting when you look for a gateway um, where this thing will be placed. So if it's in your flat, uh, for example, just a normal Raspberry Pi is um, just enough. And um, yeah, and this gateway is just getting the signal from the sensors and sending to whatsoever. In our case, the IBM platform. And um, it can be sent via Wi-Fi, via 3G or 4G. Whoops, okay. Um, so for this um, bigger um, gateway, we have a SIM card installed and um, per message is just a few kilobytes. So yeah, not that much that uh, not a SIM card can handle. And uh, there are also different um, yeah, um, transmission protocols like Sigfox or low area, um, what's that? Long range wide area network. And yeah, so those are those things to um, get the data. Uh, then we have the 
what's an IT platform. And this is just receiving the data. Um, it's uh, using the MQ MQTT um, protocol. It's a standardized um, protocol for the IoT, um, how, how to send um, the data. And um, then we have just a database, could be a NoSQL database like, uh, like the CloudEnt or MongoDB or whatsoever you want to try, or a SQL database like the DB2 or MySQL. Yeah, it's in your choice. And that's it basically. So um, maybe you then have your database, um, you have a few uh, microservices with Node.js to um, gather the data, and um, yeah, just have your front end to visualize it and also to, um, to do something and trigger um, your smart plug, for example. Okay, and um, that was the architecture. And um, for hardware, there are different solutions. So you can really go from 20 euros like a Raspberry Pi to 500 euros, um, depending what you want to do. And um, so for example, a device would be a smart plug. Uh, is it too? Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay, or a gateway, like I already mentioned. Ah, uh, it's, okay, okay, okay. A few more slide, uh, slides were added. So, um, yeah, and um, if you have a Raspberry Pi, you have your sensor, you connect it to the GPIO pins, and, um, or you can, you can see it here. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi has it already built in. Uh, for the uh, much more um, expensive models, um, you have a few um, plug-in uh, to also connect the sensors, and then you're ready. So let's see it in real time. <coughs> so just a moment. Uh, okay, there it is. So, so I'm connecting to the multi-tech. Um, and um, you can also use a Raspberry Pi. Uh, for this uh, talk, I wanted to do it with the Raspberry Pi, but it didn't work. So yeah, that's my backup plan. Uh, but um, yeah, you can see it has a SIM card installed. And the most important thing is um, that you have a software so-called Node-RED. And um, you can also um, buy Raspberry and install Node-RED on your Raspberry Pi, so it's, um, I think it's so, um, developed by IBM, not sure. Uh, but it's a Node.js application, so yeah, easy to run. And basically, you can now um, structure um, what sensors you have. Uh, so you have on the left side um, input and output uh, sensors, um, and yeah, just connect them to send the data. So you can also, I don't know, add a node for that um, you can send automatically to email, to Twitter, whatsoever. Um, in this case, we have a digital input. So if you check it, um, you just um, define on which port on the hardware um, the sensor is, and that's it. So it's really straightforward. And, um, yeah, and then you have the, a function, so-called. Um, so um, we're getting a payload, a JSON object from the sensors. And then we can do whatever we want. So in this, uh, um, we added um, a sensor type called peer for the passive infrared uh, sensor and adding a timestamp. And that's the message, um, that's the payload we get from the sensor and that we want to send to the IBM cloud to work with it later. And then, whoop, whoop, whoop. We have here the IBM Watson um, IoT platform connected. So the whole, water, uh, the whole flow is um, we are pulling um, data from the input we've defined, like every second, and you can configure a lot of things there. Um, we are manip manipulating and adding more information to this um, data, and then we send it to the IBM cloud. And basically, that's it. So. Um, yeah, it's connecting, but it's not connected. So um, I can show it to you. Uh, we can also manually trigger it. And that's the JSON object um, we're sending to the IBM platform. So um, if we would have now the, I, um, the infrared sensor connected, it would have just been um, value one or zero. So 
it has something, um, it detected something or not, um, can be other things. So you can also have a pressure sensor or yeah, a lot of things. And then um, this data is getting sent to the IBM uh, IoT platform. So this service is free. And um, I think, yeah, th we have also have a plan of you are sending, I know, 10,000 messages per second, but uh, with the free plan, um, you can do a lot of things. And um, you could basically say, okay, which device do I have? So um, it, generating, um, it generates the, um, um, the connection from um, the gateway, from the node thread to the platform. And um, basically you would have seen here the JSON object we tried to send if it would connect. And that's it. So you have your sensor data, your hardware information now in the cloud. You can also um, connect it now to a database like a NoSQL database. And uh, because, um, yeah, it's just an event stream. And um, yeah, and from this point, uh, you can do whatever you want. And it's really that simple to um, start playing around with it and try to have your apartment, house, whatsoever smarter instead of just buying a Google Echo. Okay, um, that's it so far. Uh, any questions? Um, with the data from the sensors or generally yes, with? Yes, because I mean, uh, for storage, I, I could also use a regular database. It's not that huge amount of data. <coughs> if we are just talking about sensors that I have in my apartment. Yeah, um, well, the thing is, um, you can connect it to any database you want. Um, the thing is, uh, with the IBM Watson um, platform, um, to, to just receive the data. So um, you, you have a hardware, um, you just need a gateway or any type to send it um, via Wi-Fi or 3G, and um, the platform is just really receiving the data, and then you can also connect it to an AWS storage or your local database whatsoever. So but you do not have any pro uh, um, products for, for uh, really automating stuff in the apartment? Um, no, okay. yeah, and also um, the platform is um, here also to um, manage um, devices because often you don't have just one sensor, you have, I know, 30 sensors or a lot more, and um, yeah, also many gateways and you want to gather them, polluting them, and um, yeah, aggregating them. Okay. okay, any other questions? Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. Mm-hmm. So the Raspberry Pi will send uh, send the data about the, the, the light level in my apartment to to this node node red, red thing yes. to, to the Watson cloud. And can I then create some kind of rules that I don't know if if, if the, the level is um, below this amount and the, the time of day is, is this then trigger this event or something like that? Can I you can do that, but not in the platform. So um, that's just really um, to receive the data and to, um, had to add any other functionality, like now we have a, a plug and I want to turn it off or the light. Um, you would have to um, develop it on your own. So and there's no, not the way that I can do something like a, a lambda or something that is acting on the events that's coming in this, in this thing. No. Kind of, yes. Okay, but doesn't Watson always um, claim that it's like uh, machine learning and, and um, yes. 
Yes, uh, but I'm just talking about the IT platform. So there are about, I don't know, 100 or 200 other services like the AI platform and stuff like that. And you can also connect them to trigger something. So like um, you can also um, add a chatbot uh, that, that it does something on a specific event. Um, that's possible. But it's not built in, in the um, IT Watson platform. So they can easily connect? Yes, easily. Yes, so for example, if I want to um, add an, you have different extensions you can um, add and for example, connecting to a database would be just clicking here. It would search uh, for a database service that you obviously um, already um, created in the IBM cloud, uh, but you can also specify any other um, database and you also, yeah, like I already said, have other plugins to do something else. Okay. Um, there are different plans, um, but I only used free plans, so the free tier, also in um, MVPs or POCs um, for the company, and it was also enough. So um, yeah, I think you're pretty good with um, this plan. And I think the next plan that where you have really to pay something is about five euros, ten euros per month. So it's software as a service. Yeah, and also the cloud and TP, the NoSQL um, is also free for, I think, 20 um, read and write um, queries um, per second. Um, something like that if you are doing a lot more um, at one time, you also have to pay, pay five euros, but it's really cheap. Yeah, and I also have a few um, um, promo cards if you want to try it. So it um, adds, I don't know, 50 euros to your account. So if anybody is interested, um, you can come to me afterwards. Okay. Looks like we got no more questions. Marcus, thank you so much. Round of applause, please. Thank you.